Hello students, this is Dr. Bryant with an important syllabus introduction video. Hopefully by now you've already taken time to watch my personal introductory video so that way you get to know a little bit about me as your instructor for this COM 181 online course. I want to take just a moment to go over the syllabus with you. As you know, that's usually one of the first things that you do in any class as a new semester begins. And I've turned that into a video and there'll be some questions that kind of come along with the video that you can kind of respond to and then ask any other additional questions during the Q&A session or via email as needed. So this syllabus video I will use for all of my COM 181 sections. So if there's any comments uh, related to specific sections, please make sure that you know that about your specific class and when things are due, referring to your specific assignment calendar. But this is my syllabus. You'll notice that we are already in the spring of 2019 term. You'll notice that I have my email address listed here. That is the best way to contact me if you need anything, any questions or just concerns, or if you need a deadline extended due to personal hardship. Uh, that, is, that is my um, email address there. My goal in this class is just that each of you find your voice. You develop into the very best public speaker that you can be. It's always so rewarding to hear students at the end of the semester tell me how just valuable this class was for them as they just grew personally into better public speakers as they got more and more confident in their speech and, and talking in front of people. It's just, it's a, it's a professional growth class. Don't think you're gonna walk away from this class knowing a bunch of content about speech as much as you improve personally, uh, which leads into these factors that I mention on here, that 74% of Americans suffer from public speaking anxiety, yet this will end up being one of your favorite college classes, trust me. Uh, and did you know that being a proficient public speaker can increase your chances of landing a job or being promoted? All good reasons why to take good notes and follow along and, and develop yourself in this class. Big thing here already is this idea that you must have regular access to five to eight people, kindergarten age or older, that you can give your speeches to. Otherwise, it's not really public speaking, it's having a conversation. Okay. Textbook, The Art of Public Speaking, 11th edition by Stephen Lucas. I'm sure there are other editions that will work by the same author for this Art of Public Speaking. I'm also, if you have access to that McGraw-Hill Connect inside Blackboard, you can access the electronic textbook that way. The, like I said once, and I'll say it again, the other big requirement, material that you must have are those five to eight people that can watch your speeches on a regular basis. You have, if you're in the Madisonville section, five of those to give in front of that group, and if you're in the Owensboro section, you have four because you'll do one on-campus speech. So, point being, get those people nailed down early. You only have to do it five times if you're in Madisonville, four if you're in Owensboro section, and set up appointments or whatever you can do to make sure that you've got access to those people. I find that elderly care facilities are usually more than welcoming to have people come and speak to them. That's usually a good place, sometimes even schools, if you're doing an informative speech. Okay, what else? Some big points to note. Since you're uploading videos in this class of your, your, public speeching, your public speeches that you'll give, you have to show that audience at the beginning and at the end. I gotta know that they were there. Don't try to clip them in with cool little editing stuff. I'll notice, okay? I know we're all nervous about public speaking, but folks, you get to handpick your audience of five to eight people. It's not in front of a class of people you don't know, okay? So no editing, you're uploading raw footage, it's perfect. It looks natural to me if you say, I've got to hand the camera off after showing my audience. That looks natural. That's okay. That's what I want to see. So don't feel like you've got to go in and edit your video in any way. And don't feel like you can try to crop in your audience from the last speech that you gave because you didn't want to set up an appointment time to get them all together. Just do it. Okay. You've got to do it five times for Madisonville, four times for Owensboro Community College. Just find them give your speech in front of them, and you'll check these boxes off, and, and you'll grow, okay? Um, how are the classes broken down? You need 90 for an A, 80 for a B, 70 for a C, 60 to pass. 
Okay, speeches are 50% of your grade. You have five speeches, so each one of those speeches is worth 10% of your grade. If you don't do one of your speeches, the highest you can make is a 90, and that's assuming you get 100 on everything else. So each speech makes up 10% of your grade. Um, outlines, you'll do five of those for a total of 20% of your grade, and so each one of those is essentially worth 4% of your grade. There are lecture quizzes. Each one of those is worth 4% of your grade as well. And then your professionalism, which involves sending emails in the correct fashion, communicating with your instructor in times of need, not emailing me 10 minutes before things are due saying Blackboard's messing up, okay? If you're, if you're emailing me 10 minutes before things are due and telling me that you're having uploading problems, you're not putting first things first. And that's going to lower your score in that personal skills category. So let's talk about proper email format. I feel necessary to talk to you all about electronic communication as well, mainly email. Okay, this is something you're going to encounter a lot the rest of your college career, so make sure that you get it right. Some professors are very sticky about this and won't even respond to you if you don't email them in the proper format. I'm still going to give you a response, but give me the professional respect of emailing me in a, in a decent format that's understandable and respectful at the same time. So obviously, you want to have a subject line that discusses what it is you're asking about. I would also ask that you put the course name and number. So COM 181 speech one question or speech one outline question. That's a great subject line. Before I even open your email, I know already what you're probably going to ask me and what class you're in. Because as I mentioned in my introductory video, I teach a lot of different classes. So make sure that you do that. Okay, some form of a greeting. Hi, Dr. Bryant. Hello, Professor Bryant. Comma. Your name, what class you're in. I'm in COM 181 online at, at OCTC. I noticed on Blackboard I have a zero for speech one. Can you please check on this for me? Please let me know how I can help. Closing student name. That's what this should look like. And so that's where you're going to get those skills for personal personal skills is can you effectively send an email that is very very important and back into our syllabus though um, as far as assignments let's take a look at this just in a little bit better detail we know that in order to be a good speaker you've got to have some kind of notes your pastor at church doesn't speak without notes people on the news don't speak without notes a lot of them even read from a teleprompter however reading is not public speaking okay if you sit there with a paper in front of your face and read off to me a speech that you've written, you're not public speaking. You're reading aloud to a group, okay? It's okay to have some notes that you'll review and you'll speak from, but you're not going to read with a paper in front of your face and call that public speaking. That's actually reading aloud, okay? So I want to make sure that we make that distinction early. So speech outlines are things that we do to help prepare us for our speeches so that we're not reading from a script. Speech outlines, as you'll see in some of the examples, are just outlines of your main topics. They go over what you hope to accomplish in the speech, how you want to open, how you want to close, any specific research that you may want to cite in your speech. But for each of the five speeches that you'll give, you'll do an outline or a note card or some kind of sampling. That will be a way for you to get your thoughts organized. It'll be something that you can kind of look down and refer back to, but the main, the main focus is keeping that eye contact with your audience. So we want to make sure uh, that we do those speech outlines. Again, each one is worth 4% of your total grade. You'll do five of those. Um, and as you can tell, all assignments are due Wednesday midnight. Wednesday midnight is whenever everything will be due. So um, those speech outlines lead to speeches. Okay, so as I mentioned before, you will record a speech, not you reading from a script, you will record a public speech where uh, you are in front of five to eight people, you'll show them at the beginning and at the end, okay, and you will deliver this speech, record it on your phone, you'll upload the raw footage, remember no editing, upload that raw footage into YouTube, you'll take that YouTube link and you will post it in the assignment discussion where you will reflect on things that you did well, things that you want to improve upon for your next speech. When you post that into the discussion board inside the course module, okay, 
you'll be able then to see what everyone else has done. You'll be able to go in and watch someone else's YouTube in, inside that discussion link. I want you to find one other person each week to watch and to respond what you liked about their speech and what they could improve upon for the next time. So we're going to kind of work as speech coaches for one another. Okay. Module lecture quizzes. So five modules, one for each type of speech that we'll give. These are 10 question quizzes that you can take as many times as you want based on the instructor lecture videos that I have for each module. 10 questions, take them as many times as you want to get the highest possible score. Each one is worth 4% of your grade. And we already talked about the personal effectiveness skills. So I kind of want to wrap up all my discussion on assignments quickly by saying this. You have five course modules. Each one lasts three weeks. Okay? So five modules covering the five different types of speeches that you'll give. Each one lasts three weeks. The first week is all about getting the lecture watched and the quiz taken over the lecture. The second week is all about writing the outline or the note card. The third week is all about getting the speech video posted to the discussion where someone else can view your video and then coach you each other along the way. So you're reflecting each time on your performance and you're also reflecting on someone else and that way we can kind of learn from each other and grow together as if we were a live class. So I think you all will really like that. And again, assignments are always due Wednesday midnight. Wednesday midnight assignments are always due. One thing that you may run into is on these speeches. If you are a person that gets things done early, you're going to have to wait to make that response until someone else has posted, obviously. So if they've posted, if, if no one else has posted their speech, you're the first one to post and you want to comment on somebody else's you're going to have to wait until someone else's speech populates inside that discussion board to be able to comment. But there shouldn't be an issue of you uploading your speech, reflecting on it in your post, and then making a comment on someone else's speech. You'll do that five times for Madisonville, four for OCTC, because we have the one on campus speech. Okay, course calendar, like I said, everything due on Wednesdays, five total modules. You'll see due dates in here. Important things to remember, late work. I do not accept late work without a written doctor's note, document of family emergency, and um, any other things that can be approved by me. That's the only way I will accept late work. Again, contacting me is the best way through email. You've also noticed that you've got uh, some of the other course competency stuff down here in what I call the technical stuff. Feel free to read that if you find that necessary. Otherwise, you've kind of got the bones of the class. I think you all will do an outstanding job. I'm just looking forward to each one of you developing in your speech along the way. This is going to be a great, great class. Email me with any questions. Email me with questions about this syllabus if anything was not clear. I appreciate your time, and uh, let's go to work.